first allow me to speak on behalf of the many Egyptian women who don't make the headlines. These women are patriotic, courageous, to side by side with the Egyptian men during the revolution uh, back in 2011. Uh, currently, we have seen a rise in sexual violence against women in Egypt who are politically active during rallies in the main squares like Tahrir squares and yet this coincided uh, with the uh, uh, expansion of the ruling Muslim Brotherhood party in using their militia without any government uh, cover. Uh, more derogatory comments made by the Prime Minister of Egypt against women both on uh, the, uh, how they care for their children and nursing them and second about rape and he made uh, so light uh, of the issue. Uh, my questions, and allow me uh, to, to make a combination of questions. What can you, UN women, do for the Egyptian women at this juncture uh, in history? And how can future commitment include a component of implementation and penalizing for the governments that they don't comply? And the third is, does the UN women have the authority to refer such cases of sexual violence exercised by the state, militias affiliated with ruling parties to the ICC. Thank you. Um, we, have, uh, we have made strong statements against uh, the situations you have mentioned because we have been following them, uh, informing uh, everywhere in, in our we we also I mean we always are following all this news and uh, expressing our concern and our um, uh, indignation because of this situation that has to stop uh, we know we saw it in the worst possible scenario that is that uh, rape and violence is used as a mean as a tactic of war but we know also that it can be used and we have seen it in many places in the elections period for example a way of threatening women so if they are a candidate don't go further or women who go to vote etc etc so we have seen the use of this kind of violence sexual violence against women in politics or women in, in other issues or women organizers what can you and women of course uh, raise the voice and we have done it and if it's needed we're going to do it many more times second raise concern on, uh, on, on member state, on the member state in this case, about this situation, and we have also done it with, through letters, and, and we have I've raised our concern and preoccupation. And third, of course, we can support women's organization uh, that in their own struggle uh, against these issues, they can be stronger and, 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 and be supported. Uh, one of the ideas of this CSW, not the idea, one of the purposes is that and that's why we said that we want two things we want strengthening of uh, international norms and standards but also uh, the uh, so-called uh, action oriented where accountability has to have to have a place I mean we we need some measures on accountability to ensure that governments do comply with what they have signed and where they have promised. And uh, that's one of the discussions that will be done during these two weeks on what are the kinds of issues that member states are willing to accept in terms of, uh, of uh, being held accountable for not respecting what they already have signed. Well, probably that's one of the reasons why uh, agreement, I mean, negotiations goes on because governments want to be sure that what they can sign, they will be able to deliver afterwards um, and, 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 and finally um, no we don't have the authority uh, but we do work uh, directly with uh, I mean we do work with the rest of the UN and we do work directly with the High Commissioner for Human Rights and with other partners that can uh, but, but anybody can I mean people can also bring some cases to the international tribunals but I said, no, UN Women doesn't have in its mandate that particular authority. 